Yeah, I keep thinking Ready Player One, man. Yeah. Like, uh, with the full haptic suits and then the, uh, like, he had that track, you know? The the track that could go omnidirectional. Yes. Which is apparently a thing That's now. That's a thing. I've seen it, it's dude. It's a thing now. I, I looked it up to see how much it would cost. I couldn't even find the price. I have a feeling it's, like, over $100,000. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's going there, and then it's going far beyond what we could ever imagine as well after that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the Ready Player One stuff seems like it's right around the corner at this point. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. A couple podcasts ago, it was a, two or three ago, we mentioned the idea of immersive gaming. Yeah, and how'd that come up? I can't remember. I don't remember, no. dude. I, I'd have to look it up. But <laughs> I remember you being like, oh, that'd be a good topic. Yeah, yeah. And I don't I, remember how we got there. And I was like, let's write that down. I don't remember how we got here. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> this place that's right fair. now that's fair uh <laughs> but it did seem like a good topic um and the more i thought about it the more i was uh i was pretty into the idea of of going into what is immersive gaming uh where where was it where is it today where do we think it's going what's mm -hmm. our own experiences with it um and i and actually let's do this let's start by reading the definition of immersive gaming. Oh. can we do that let's do it yeah let's do it because i i wasn't sure exactly when you mentioned hey let's do this topic you know, we brought it up, and I was like, what does that mean? Immersive gaming. So let's tell them. So the definition, immersive games are video games that transport the player into an alternative world where techniques are used to make them feel more like the character they're playing. This is achieved through a combination of good game flow, fully developed storylines, uh, and extreme realism made possible by cutting-edge graphics. Now, I enjoy this definition, and I agree with 66% of it. Um, I be in the re well, I agree with almost what's what's half of um 33. What, what is that number? 16.5. Yep, what's 16.5 plus 33? Whatever that 16 is, 16.5 6, 16. Six, plus 66 is a number. That's the percentage. Yeah. I agree. Okay, what I mean by that is why they, are you busting out math on the podcast? <laughs> they gave out three different components, they, they, they put three pieces of pie to this, right? Good game flow, fully developed storylines, and extreme realism made possible by cutting edge graphics. I think the cutting edge graphics piece is is very big. I would never dismiss that as being a critical component in what it is to create or experience an immersive game. However, um, I don't necessarily believe. I believe that that's one that you did. We play of, Minecraft. I know nobody's going to say the graphics in Minecraft are great. Nobody is going to. In yet. fact, that's usually most people that are just like, "Why do you play that ugly blocky game?" I know. Yeah, you wait. <laughs> you look at you look at something like Decked Out. Now you have yep. to say graphics are, are not even on the table. Mm -hmm. But you look at something like Tango's uh, Decked Out, and that is in all that to me, that was an extremely immersive game. I didn't only forget that I was playing Minecraft, I forgot I was playing a game because he was able to capture yeah. the ambiance. He was able to capture what it is we're trying to do here. The storyline is obviously travel based, the, 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 the tension and release, all these. Every time I would go down one of the stairs, which was arguably kind of a safe zone going to the next level. I felt this like weight lifted from my shoulders, if only for a couple seconds, because that's how well the game was designed. I was so immersed mm -hmm. in that game. So <clears throat> I do believe graphics are a big part of it. Um, but not everything. I, yeah. I think that it, it also has to do with how um, like imaginative that, you know, I think you can be or whatever. But let's go. Let's journey back. Yeah, I was going to say, go back in time. 1980s, the graphics weren't good. Could you still get immersed in games on the Nintendo exactly. entertainment system? Right. You know, like, the... uh, to a certain point, right? Like, let, let's talk about it. So, you know, I don't think anybody got immersed in Pong, you know, or or <laughs> or, uh, or even immersed I don't know, in Tetris. If you play enough, if you play enough Pong that you actually felt like you were at a table tennis playing IRL that's yeah. basically what it was or that you are the paddle like you know yeah. like it doesn't uh maybe I mean yeah. if you spend enough time you know with your eyes on the screen then it meant eventually you might forget uh what the difference is between what you're what you're controlling and the real reality around you very good I I think it's a matter of time that <clears throat> like to just get immersed uh, is you being away from reality long enough that you forget what the difference is? Yeah, right. No, so I, I can yeah. feel. I, I don't know. Pong could probably do there it. You go. I like you your argument, dude. It. How what? How well is the game separating you from reality? 
right? That that's probably almost like almost a the further from reality you get, the more immersed you are in the game. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a better way to define yeah. it. I mean, it's much easier these days when you can put on a VR headset and feel like yeah, you're on we're a roller get coaster. There. We're gonna right? get there. Very so yeah, the yeah. Di- the dichotomy between the two are different, but doesn't mean that one can't be immersive. It just means it's been right. evolving the whole and that's, time. And that's your argument of the, the graphics thing, right? Yes, exactly, 100%, right? I, I have to believe that game creators in general, from the dawn of man, they never tried to create a game that you were doing in passing. They wanted to create a game that was so enticing that that is where you were in that moment, right? Is that Where's that book? I'll get it. Get the book. Keep the camera on you. He's get. He's getting a book right now. Oh, I can't put the camera on you. I'm in front of it. That's okay. That's all right. So we'll go. Cut to, out my butt we'll, shot. So Impulse got this book. Where, <laughs> where did you get this? Uh, Barnes and Nobles yesterday. I, uh, ooh, that was great. I went to the mall with my family, and we just walked the mall and shopped. We didn't have a goal. Well, my my wife had a goal. She wanted to get her steps in. All right. <laughs> but, but we just we we went we popped into Barnes and Nobles. My kids were wanting some new books, and I saw that one, and uh, I thought. Uh, you know, I have this shelf in my in my office in the studio that we're in right now that has a bunch of old school consoles because I'm I'm really into it and they're all Nintendo Entertainment System, Super NES, Nintendo 64, yeah. GameCube. I got some really cool stuff on a shelf. Maybe I'll take a picture of it that you can put yeah, up, up yeah, on we'll screen supplement. for people. Yeah, um, shelf's not done. I want to decorate it more, and this is part of it. I saw this book. It's the Game Console 2.0, and basically it's a photographic history of. Like almost every game console in the world, yeah. from Atari to Xbox. Yes, you know dude. what I mean, and it's crazy. Yes, this. So let's go. Let's journey back here, right? We're gonna go back to games when they first. I, I gotta tell you something, dude. This game, or the, I'm sorry, this book. Just looking at it reminded me of a part of my life that I, I kind of just dismissed. Is that I, I don't think I was ever able to give games what I really wanted to give them to the point to where I wish I was back in the day of the Pong console. We just talked about Pong. Look at this. Are you looking? Look at Pong. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the. Look at this. Specifically system. made to play Pong. Specifically, the game is for Pong, right? And it sold five over five million of those sold. Why? Why? I'm. I'm. This is a real question. Because people wanted to play Pong. It was one of the first so like gaming systems. You know, that was 1975, man. You like, and all this. Its whole purpose was this is before they came up with the idea of like cartridges that you could play different games it's yes, like dude. this was made to specifically play, play pong, pong and pong and only. sold over five million units like that's it, insane yeah. and anybody who put it on their system was deemed as somebody from the future so now look at this <laughs> right so here's 1980 you pointed this out that nintendo was making these these little so if you're listening to audio only i'm going to do my best to explain this but i'm, I'm basically going to be showing the camera a pocket version of donkey kong that came out in 1980 uh, this is Nintendo. This is like a, a little pocket system. You can see how there's hinges here, so you bend it, and it goes into your 1980. Yeah, it was like the first uh, Nintendo DS. <laughs> you know, like yes, the DS dude, is the yeah. same kind of uh, yeah. form factor, anyway. Yeah. So, so if it if it's so, this is for people to put in their pockets and play whenever. But I would venture that the people who developed these games, even in doing it like they never had the intention for you to enjoy this game in passing or to enjoy it as a distraction from something else or to be able to do two things at once and this being some sort of white noise activity. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think that they wanted you to be as immersed as possible. I think that even with this really archaic technology, they wanted you to get very, very involved. But, but most things back then um, were going to be poor graphics and, and, but when we have to be okay with that, but, but it was still a, a journey that mankind was going on to understand what it was. And what we found in my opinion is that we liked it a lot. Yeah. We really, really like the concept of games. The more real, the better. And you get going, and you told a story about, um, yeah, that that one. What's it called? What's that game? Mad Max. What's that called? What's that game called? <laughs> Which game? The game that your dad killed off to kill the power. Oh, Blaster Master. On. Blaster Master. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, man. My brain wanted to say Mega Man. I don't think for a second you thought you were that character but something no. tells me when you were in the zone you were kind of that character no i remember i remember as like the enemies would shoot bullets at my character in game i would physically dodge yeah. them <laughs> irl yeah yeah um, and i was just thinking like okay donkey kong was anybody playing that that version of donkey kong from 1970 whatever it was and like 
trying to physically jump over the barrels. <laughs> you know what I mean? The barrels yeah. come rolling and they're jumping in their yeah. seats, you know? Maybe not. Maybe not, but I do remember Blaster Master. I mean, that was Nintendo. That was like, you know, early 90s, maybe late 80s, where I, I would physically do that. You know, um, GoldenEye was another one where, yes. you know, I think You're, you had the ability. You went I know, but you had the yeah. ability to like, like peek around a corner. Remember yeah. that? If you press like the right and left triggers. Yep. And I would do that IRL at the same time. I still do like, that on Minecraft right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think they're, I think our brains can uh, like embody what's happening on screen yeah. after a certain time of, of just and i think with blaster master because i would play for hours on end that's what happened i would just forget that everything's being done through a controller not my physical person yeah yeah you know yeah but the fact that your physical person was doing that is the the industry was like well let's capitalize on that hence vr and we'll get in that mm -hmm. in a, we'll get to that in a second but let's go back to to goldeneye i would i would say like, what came out first gta or goldeneye do you remember got to be goldeneye cuz goldeneye was nintendo 64 okay and okay. gta was was i think more pc PlayStation. based or PlayStation. playstation yeah. yeah yeah but i don't know which it doesn't matter so what i do remember is i think goldeneye may be the first time that I started to uh, feel so immersed in the game that it had a residual effect to where it would carry over after I stopped playing the game, right? So that's that's what I think is, is very different. I think when people played Pong back in the day, it, no matter how immersed they got, I don't think they felt like they were playing Pong when they turned off the console, right? Mm -hmm. I was playing Goldeneye, and I liked it so very much. Now, Goldeneye is an old uh, 007 game. Like James, Bond, James Bond, 007. James Bond, 007. James Bond, 007. Yeah. And there was a specific level that was, I don't remember where it was, but you're, a lot of the henchmen or the enemies that you're hunting, they were behind this wall. And there was a fraction of their head that was peeking up above the wall as they walked. And it bobbed. And if you were a good shot, you could pick them off over, over this wall. Because and there was only a, a handful of pixels of, <laughs> of what their head was. But it was so well done. I mean, for back in the day, it was so groundbreaking that I was into it. I was, When I did it, I actually convinced myself I was a good shot. Uh, well, I would leave the game. I'd be out in public. There'd be a wall. If there was somebody walking on the other side of it and I could see just their head, I'd be like, I could pick that off. Like, I remember being like, I remember like, like there was something about the, the, like the, the, that little bit of their head. I'm like, look how vulnerable they are. Don't they know that like, I could, like somebody could pick them off. You're not Jeez. supposed to hide that part of your head. Like it's, or you should, you know, I was out of my mind, but the bottom line is I carried it. We had like this residual. Oh, you didn't actually act on it. Dude. Well, of course not. Of course not. But, and it wasn't like, I thought it was golden eye, but it was one of those things where I was like, the game got me believing that yeah. to, to look for vulnerabilities like that. And, um, it wasn't until to me, that wasn't problematic to me. That was interesting. Where it became problematic was GTA. Now GTA is grand theft auto. And the, when the very first one came out, it really was that game was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. It was very violent, but it was more had really it had pretty stellar graphics, but it also had uh, it was it was like the first sandbox game. There was no time limit. There was I mean you could literally just spend your whole time doing nothing, just wandering around just, the city, just yeah, stealing cars and causing havoc and doing whatever. I mean it was it it was a really fun game it, because you had so much freedom, right? Well, if you stole a car, which every car by the way every single car is up for grabs. Even if it's being driven, you can pull the person out. What you want to do to the person before you take the car is up to you. And then you can. That game really tapped into like a very brutal side of humanity, didn't it? It did. Like, yeah. it, it's almost daunting to, to see how popular that game got. I you agree. know, on whatever version they're on now. And I agree. God, I haven't played it like lately. I, I remember playing it back in the day, but I haven't played it lately. I am almost scared at how real. The graphics have made I know. those interactions it's been these days. Years since anyway. I played it. No, it's been. I'm with you. It's been years since I've played it. But I think you're nailing it. Is that I? It didn't. It did. The fact that you could steal a person's car and pull it. You could pull them out of the car and you could just drive away with their car. Or you could pull them out. You can beat them up and drive away with their car. Or you could pull them out. You can get in the car. You can run them over. Or you can pull them out and you can shoot them and you can drive. It was just like. And then you can change the radio station. And you can change the radio station and listen to. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can do all these things, right? Well, here's the deal. None of that stuff have I ever wanted to do, right? And I think I would venture most people don't want to do that stuff. However, I would venture almost everybody has thought about it, which is why they built those mechanics into the game. You know what I mean? They didn't. They didn't. They didn't build a mechanic into the game of pulling weeds because who wants to do that? You know what I mean? This Who who even thinks of it? Have you never is, played Power Wash Simulator? <laughs> Fair. Like, that, that's the, a different The fact level. that there isn't a game for pulling weeds that's is fair. beyond me at this point. It would only work if you were pulling a lot at a time and the grass instantly looked better. That's a gratification game. <laughs> but 
I remember playing uh, GTA for hours and, uh, you know, you drive around, you can blast your red lights, you can stop at red lights, you can do whatever. And I remember I was at my friend's house playing and then I left his house and I'm driving home. And there was a red light. And I, my brain, I'm trying to figure out how to say this so people don't think I'm completely loose cannon. I thought about, I don't need to, it's, I'm just going to go through this red light. You know what I mean? But when I say I thought about it, I mean it was a fraction of a fraction of a thousandth of a second. And my brain's like, oh, my goodness. I played that game for too many hours straight. You know what I mean? I'm like, I almost, I, uh, oh I had a gosh. very temporary uh, inability to separate the two. It would last less than a tenth of a second. But it, I was like, it was like weird. Like, it was mm -hmm. weird, man. And that's when I was like, maybe immersive gaming is, I mean, I think it's good. But, but I think either we need to know how to handle it or what's coming has got to be scary. And I meant what's coming Back then, what's coming and where we've come with VR has been pretty awesome. Now, you're not using your VR a lot. No, no, I haven't used it a lot. Why? Just, just time. I just, just time. Did you not? Just, did you like it when you were it, using it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, I, you know, I said it's it's time, but it's more than that. I felt like it when I put on the headset, it disconnected me from the rest of the world so much that it made me uncomfortable. You felt too vulnerable. Um, yeah, like I. Like, I felt like uh, everyone in the room was staring at me, but yet I couldn't see them to know if they were or not. <laughs> and I basically I was isolating myself. So if I was if I was in here alone and I put the headset on, that's fine. I'd be I'd be perfectly happy. But when I was like checking it out and stuff, it was typically in a family space, you know, living room or whatever, where the rest of my family's around and. And I just felt awkward with that. Like I didn't like that. I didn't like. I didn't like knowing what people were doing around me. You know. Interesting. And so, but yeah, if I was alone in a safe space, I'd absolutely love VR. I just never. If I'm alone in a safe space, I'm working. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, my first VR experience was at like an expo I was at many years ago, and it was, um, it was Beat Saber. and I liked it very much. So I had a line, and you would go up, and there was like this felt rope uh tie off area like a square area and you put on the headset and you go in and you do it do you think you would have partaken in that at this expo because that's just like a lot of people looking at you in a very public space uh i would have but i would have felt the same way yeah uncomfortable with it yeah, yeah. okay i need i need augmented reality to where i can still see my environment around me and see see the game at the same time and not be completely taken away and ar is getting there and that's what's yeah. interesting is yeah that's the whole different ball game yeah that's that's a whole different ball. i like it but i think about it and when i would do uh when i would use my vr set and everything um there's like this cheap spider-man game it's the craziest thing it's like the most generic building structures in a giant city and you just you have you just you can fling yourself about and if I got a nice good pull, f -f -f -f, and I would just do this whole thing and go soaring like over the city or whatever, I felt a little nauseous. Like <laughs> I was just nothing mm -hmm. changed about my physical being. But you want to talk about immersive? I felt like I was flying over this city, and and I was just trying my best to. I want to land on that building. You know what I mean? So as I'm flying over it, I would physically turn my body around and then cast the cast the ropes or the strings or whatever, and pull myself into that building and feel like i was spider-man that's that's immersive <laughs> that's you know? cool it is cool i did do the roller coaster one. Oh, i did the roller coaster one and i did I, I was fine i didn't get nauseous or anything what i did find myself wishing was that it was 4d like because it, it's it, it you know vr kind of is like 3d right in a way and i felt like i wanted 4d i wanted the i wanted a fan on me so i could really feel like i was in motion i wanted <laughs> i wanted the smells of the theme park. Somebody throwing up. Yeah, not the, the, yeah, the, the throwing up did come first in mind there, but no, I wanted. You know what I mean? I wanted to. I wanted the whatever you go on uh, under uh, by a waterfall and feel a mist on you. You know, I wanted that. I wanted more. You know, yeah. from the experience. But it was cool. Like I did. I did actually like find myself forgetting that this isn't a real roller coaster. Wow. After a while. To see, and that's crazy because at one point it's like just go to a go on a roller coaster. But you guys, you want that takes so a lot of money and travel and time and <laughs> right. stuff. And then it's waiting in lines. I hate waiting in lines. <laughs> That's what they really need to do. 
<laughs> they need to make you have wait a in game, line. <laughs> have a game where you have to wait in the queue. <laughs> Dude, make it, you, not only that, but you have to you have to go and buy tickets into the park, and ha- you have to actually walk you're not let in unless you complain about how expensive it is. <laughs> you have to walk all the way through the park to the ride. <laughs> you have yeah. to get in. One of your kids has to say, "Stop I don't for feel churros." Good. Yeah. yeah, all that stuff. Oh man, you have to get patted down on your way in. <laughs> There you go. Get real. Go we'll buy a burger and fries for experience. everybody, and the bill's like one hundred and ninety-seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. Uh, I I think I, we've talked about the VR before when I've done poker. What a crazy! Yeah, game. you were telling me about this oh, poker game, and the gracious. way you explained it, I was like, "Geez, I had no idea." So go ahead, fill everybody in so, that hasn't played this poker game in VR. Yeah. So here's what's interesting: is that being immersed is identifying with the character, but there's almost this other level of being Im- immersed in the game when you're playing with other people who are simultaneously immersed in the game. And so when I was playing poker, I'm sitting at this table and there's just a bunch of people sitting around it and they're all just people in their own living rooms with their own headsets from anywhere in the globe, you know, and we're just playing together and we are all so very immersed that we found ourselves having pretty interesting conversations. Now this was at the peak of COVID. So a lot of people were leaning into this type of technology, Mm -hmm. but we found ourselves having really interesting conversations and connecting with one another and i think i've told this story before where it became clear when one of their voices was kind of high pitched we're like oh this is a young this is a younger kid everybody keep it cool you know what i mean mm-hmm. now he it was a full grown avatar body or whatever but as soon as we heard the voice uh, the rest of us were like let's all keep it cool and and i think the kid i think he offered to leave we're like no no you're fine you know and so we were all just having casual conversations and then somebody left and somebody new came in and didn't understand the dynamic of the table and heard this kid's voice and said something kind of rude to the kid. And it's just avatars. And this is when I was like, don't do that. And everybody else was like, yeah, don't do that, man. We're not doing that here. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was just messing around. Like, that's, is it even immersive anymore? It's not even immersive. <laughs> it's just the world. Like, it's yeah. just people hanging out at this point. But I would get so immersed in this game and playing poker. And to the point where it was like, I rely a lot on people's faces when I play poker. Well, I can't see their faces. So I'm going to have to uh, do something different now. And it's going to be the speed at which they're betting. It's going to be the things that they play with because there's a bunch of little like gadgets and stuff you can play with or whatever. It's going to be their posture. I can see, I I would see when sometimes their head would whip back. That means that that person was leaning back in their chair like, uh, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that, like any little thing I can pick up on. So now I'm immersed on this colossal level to where I am there. I am at that table with this person. I am putting on a bluff on this person because I've been watching them for a while. I haven't seen them once in my life. Not (laughs) once. I'm just so immersed in the avatar version of them. And that Mm -hmm. was years ago. Where are we going with this? Yeah. I keep thinking ready player one, man. Yeah. Like, uh, with the full haptic suits and then the, uh, like he had that track, you know, the the track that could go omnidirectional, yes, which is apparently a thing. That's now. a thing. I've seen it. It's dude. a thing now. I, saw, I looked it up to see how much it would cost. I couldn't even find the price. I have a feeling it's like over a hundred thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I I think it's going there, and then it's going far beyond what we could ever imagine as well. After that, you yeah. know what I mean? Like the Ready Player One stuff seems like it's right around the corner at this point. Yeah. You know, but yeah, what's coming after that? Yeah. I I, I don't know, man. I I don't know. I think it's just it's one of those things where, you know, back in the 70s or, or whenever it was when somebody thought where you know where's computers going and they're, oh they're gonna be twice as big and <laughs> yeah. three times the speed yeah you know <laughs> you don't know like we don't know no. where it's going and until it happens you know yeah uh, you know unless you're just in a crazy a, a dreamer of some sort but i i have no idea you know and you know 30 years from now are we going to be gaming Yes. On on this kind of stuff. Yes. You know? I, I think we will be. And let me let me um we talked about this before when we talked about the power glove. Remember the power glove? Mm, yeah. So the power glove, if you remember, you didn't just plug it in and play. What else did you have to do? You know I didn't own one. Oh, I, we talked about that too. I found out that it was crappy before oh, so it's, I it's, it's spent terrible. money on it. Yeah. It's terrible. But <laughs> but it was them pushing the envelope, which you have to respect. Mm-hmm. But it also wasn't just a glove. You had to put this thing on your TV. Uh, that was like a right angle thing that had three different sensors, top left, top right, bottom right. You had to hang it on your TV, and that was what was sort of a sensor for the glove or whatever. Mm-hmm. What I'm getting at is that it, you had to bring the infrastructure with the technology. So my, I think, 
I think, and I could be way off here, dude, but I think that the future, uh, what the future holds is going to be rooms dedicated to that, right? When a house gets built or whatever, this can be your game room. Here's your living room. Here's this. And the game room itself, I don't know. It might, who knows what it's going to come with. It might come with a lot of different like anchors or whatever to, you know, put up whatever, whatever have you. But that floor you were talking about is pretty big. I think that there's a world where you have that floor and you also have harnesses and, you, and your harness has cables that are tied to motors that are part of the game that you're playing. I mm -hmm. think that it's going to become it just profoundly immersive. And fans. Fans. And it, smells that smells. get shot. And water Be so, gets and, shot in your face. And happens. And puke. I think <laughs> Shoots puke at no. I don't want the puke. Okay. But. Fair enough. I think that like the haptic suits <laughs> and stuff like that. So have you, did you watch the show? I bet you a lot of people listening or watching are thinking of the show. Oh boy. What's it called? Is it uploaded? Upload. 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 Yeah. Yep. Oh my goodness, dude. And you see how the digital version. So upload <clears throat> it's, I don't want to give too much of the show away, but essentially somebody perishes in the future. Somebody perishes. And before they had perished, they actually took a, like a freeze frame of their brain, like, their thoughts or yeah, memories. all their memories, all their characteristics, they put their, they and put every, their everything. On hard yeah. Drive. yeah, yeah, they, their entire existence. Yeah, yeah, they just put it in memory in case you had to tap into it. Then they perish, and then they created sort of a character in this different virtual world of that person to the point to where they had no idea they had even died. They're like, "What? What is this place?" Uh, anyways, but the person's uh, wife from the real world, they were still having connection, and they were doing it through the through the use of her using a haptic suit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just we're talking mm -hmm. about the, you know, physical stuff here. But her using a haptic suit to... So, the to me, what they're getting at is, like, this is the future of, of what it is for immersive gaming. In immersive... It's going to be on... It's going to stretch beyond gaming and go into existence. I would I would venture that poker was on the on the fence to where it, it started out as, as immersive gaming and turned into an immersive existence to where I was just there hanging out with total strangers poker was an afterthought you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so i think that that's that might be um where well you said headed. like somebody could like hand you a, a cigar and light it yeah. and stuff like like that's the stuff that's like oh, it's beyond crazy. me it's like how do, crazy. that is how do they do that it's what, crazy or some of the other gadgets that people play with you you, you <laughs> tell me stories about. so uh you get a boomerang and throw that about you can get a drone if somebody's flying their drone too much, then anybody who has a gun can shoot it out of the sky. You can, <laughs> you can get these little like fidget spinners. You can get, uh, um, oh, you can get little like uh, toy like animals and stuff. Like literally, get a, a a little baby horse and just like put it as your card protector, and it kind of trots around near your cards. And <laughs> it's really cute stuff. Um, and it's 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 very cool. And and for the most part, people are not obnoxious. Like, for see, the that's part. the part that I would have I would struggle with is is the like strangers online. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't really care to meet strangers online because to. a lot of times they, I feel like they're going to be obnoxious. I'm they they like might them. be. That's why there's a mute button for people like that. They may have been my favorite feature is that at any time. And like I said, most people are great, but this was an immersive existence. And people, when they exist, they don't want to be miserable. So when somebody comes in in the real world, we have to deal with it in whatever fashion is available to us. But here you can actually flip up your hand and pull out a remote and point it at them and just hit mute. And they know you muted them? Oh, yeah. They, 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 do they know? I'm trying to remember. It's been years, but you do this and their whole body just, it does, it's not like they just become silent. Their body becomes like a crash test dummy. No words, no movement. Now, the poker's still there, but no words, no movement. Just, and I think if they see you, I think only if you point it at them, they'll assume you're doing that. I don't know if they actually, I don't remember if they know. <laughs> um, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think I was muted once. I really don't think so. I don't think I was ever, ever obnoxious enough to be muted. I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I was. What was funny is when somebody was so obnoxious, everybody muted them. So it would just be a bunch of people hanging out, and then there's this one crash test dummy because they were just <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> so if they don't know they're muted, are they like sitting there trying to talk to people and not getting response back then? Probably. It's like. We do that on in game uh, Minecraft all the time. We forget to unmute. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. Well, see, no, that's around. You're muted. Yeah. So in Minecraft, I'll tell you what. When we, you and I, especially when we were doing the Naked and Scared series, which was a Minecraft series you and I used to do, and hopefully we'll do again. That was modeled off of Naked and Afraid, where we had 21 Minecraft days to complete this ridiculous challenge. But we also were on ultra hardcore, so one life, and you don't get your hearts back, and all that. 
Uh, so you take damage. Well, that's you can't take any more damage, that type of thing. Well, when we would build up high, like a way high in the air to build something, oh, yeah. I would feel it, bro. Yeah. I feel it in, in my giblets. Like, you know what I mean? When you're like, you're like trying to make this giant, uh, uh, like, like one wide bridge super high up that if I slip our season's over or whatever, mm -hmm. but I would like look over the edge and I would feel it like, like physiologically within me yeah. in that moment. And I'm like, this is, how can this, it doesn't have to be like great. That, that IRL fear of heights could actually come into play. Yes. Cause because you know, there's there, you know, if you go, if you fall, like there's actually, you pay the price. Yes. The season's over. Season's over. Yeah, and I think that's like when you started talking about tangos decked out. That was it. Oh like my goodness. Like the reason why you felt so immersed was because you had that that pressure, and it really felt like, you know, you're running from your life from these these ravagers, and um, and it was it was a big deal, you know, because you had that pressure of succeeding. You had that pressure of oh, I paid admission to get in type thing you know you had only so many keys to get in into the dungeon and and you're competing for something so you put that pressure on so it's like once you're in this kind of pressure cooker in the game that's when it really starts to feel immersive yes you know yeah and i think that's like what you're talking about like naked and scared did that to us decked out did that to us and it's minecraft it's a blocky game and it's a blocky and somehow game. you still forget that that it's not real life yes and think about phasmophobia like mm -hmm. that's a game that oh if, i've screamed <sighs> i've screamed like in terror yes. like i thought i was really gonna get murdered by a ghost yes <laughs> you <dude. know? laughs> yes I, I i don't i'll tell you right now dude okay i'm an old man i like games i know they're not real i struggle to play phasmophobia by myself if not streaming like nothing no streaming not playing with buddies so there's no friendly voices by myself in the dark like it that that game will get to me it will, mm -hmm. it is, it is, in my opinion, so immersive, but it's the little things. You know, you're in this house or whatever structure it is, hunting for a ghost, and the lights are on. You're going, you're looking around, and then you hear like just like a, a slight little, like something fell in the other room. Mm -hmm. That, that's, this is virtual and something, it was, this is the sound. I'm scared. Why am I scared at it? Because I am. Because mm -hmm. they did it. They got the job done. Yeah. You know what I mean? They designed good sound it so of, well. Good sound design can do that. Yeah, you know? there you go. Good sound design, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it got me. I was so <laughs> immersed. I was so scared. And I, I I don't even play it anymore. Because to me, I don't like being scared. I'm not something I get. Some people like it. I don't like it. Um, you don't play it alone. Well, that's what I'm saying. What I don't saying, anymore. Yeah. I don't play it alone anymore. Yeah. I tried to. And I was like, and I did it for a little bit. But I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> like, I'm so afraid the whole time. I don't like it. I'd feel better if there was somebody in my office just talking about some random story I don't care about right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but that game was so immersive, and they did such a good job with the sound design and the story design and just the and, and just the game design. Uh, in my opinion, they did such a good job that they, they got me. They pulled me in, and that's what I got. You know what it is? Immersive game developers are fishermen, and we are the fish. Can they hook you or can they not? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> that's why that's that's why people like tango impress me he pulled that off and decked out yeah yeah it's one heck of a game design and then uh execution on bringing that whole thing to life yes you know he built the he built the set you know most game designers they might not have to worry about all that you know if, if you're talking about like tabletop games yeah you know you just got to get your your cardboard map down you know, or whatever, but Tango had to build a 3D environment that made us really feel like we were in these caves yes. and caverns and and um, throne rooms and, and and all this kind of stuff. Like he took us through um, this journey, and his sound design was also there. You know, yes, there was there was uh, there was a lot of ambient sounds that he added, and then there was also the sounds of uh triggers like your cards being played and then there was the mob sounds you could hear the ravager around the corner you could hear the yes. vex the vex making noise as they yes. came at you and stuff like that uh you could hear the fires rumbling you know it, everything and, and all of that just translated into just like feeling like you were literally there and scared for your life running run from ravagers yes and trying to be a, a hero and victorious in this mission so yeah i mean he did a, he did a stellar job now, let me ask you this. I'm going to up the ante. So put on your seatbelt. We, uh, we challenged the definition of immersive gaming from a graphic standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to challenge it from a gameplay standpoint. Would you argue that Dungeons & Dragons, the, like the board game version of Dungeons & Dragons, is immersive? 
the board game version. Yeah, I guess I'm not. I'm not a D and D guy. No, uh, I yeah, I, I never played Dungeons and Dragons. I, but I didn't it's got even know. cards and dice and stuff. Yeah, like. I don't now, know if there's a board. Lots that. of our listeners are avid D and D people. Yeah, that hate us right now. Sure. Yeah, but I've never played. Because we are it. so ignorant. I, I don't. I've never played. It. <laughs> I've never played it. But um, I would. I would argue that it is immersive. Oh I, yeah. I think that yeah, people it's immersive feel. because it's 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 your imagination. Yeah. It, you know what what's being. From what I can tell, you know, I've only like seen scenes on Stranger Things of some kids playing it, you know. <laughs> but that that that's my that's my full experience with Dungeons and Dragons is from watching some kids on Stranger Things play it. Yeah. Um. But in their mind, when when the the dungeon master or whatever the 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 main guy is, he's saying, you know. This these monsters are coming at you with these weapons and they're uh, uh, doing this kind of attack or whatever that the players in their mind they see it they they are envisioning those those monsters are envisioning that them carrying those weapons and attacking and therefore they're immersed you know yeah but I also think that they are feeling I I, I don't really understand D and D but you build up your character you right you could get go through a lot to get some sort of weapon for example boy we are just broadcasting our ignorance I'm fine with it. You can do a lot to build up maybe a weapon, and then if you lose that weapon or something to that effect, you lose something that you've been like they. I think that their the emotion is very real with that. Like their their character, they're the immersed in this game, and it has like quite literally nothing to do with graphics other than what their own imagination is painting. Just right. like you're saying. Do you think we do that innately when playing video games? Do you think we supplement hmm. uh, what could be perceived as bad graphics with? Our own imagination to make them good graphics in I, our head. That could be it, because if you think about it, Phasmophobia's graphics are not that great, right? You know what I mean. But it feels like we're there. You know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think we do? I think so. Yeah, I, I think you know. I'm I'm like thinking back to, like, okay, some of the terrible graphic games like Rad Racer. Oh my goodness you know? gracious, dude! Like, at some point, your brain could supplement enough that you felt like you were driving a car. <laughs> yeah. You you're know? not wrong. You dude. really felt like you were driving a car, and it didn't matter that the graphics were bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, we played Battlefield Two. Oh, and, it's a good and one. And I'm thoroughly convinced because I flew enough chopper in that game, and I had you know the actual like throttles and joystick and stuff. I, I I'm thoroughly convinced I could go fly a helicopter <laughs> in real life and do just fine. Like I, I got this. You know. <laughs> You could not. No, I couldn't. Yeah, nor there's, could I there's, navigate there's the TV guided missile. But, <laughs> or nor could I put a claymore underneath my feet, blow myself into three hundred feet in the air, and pop into the chopper with you. That's not but, a real thing. No, not maybe. There <laughs> might not be any part of you might land in the chopper. <laughs> might just be like your earlobe. You know. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I I think uh, getting back to it, I, I I do think that our our brains have the ability to supplement information and paint a picture paint a story paint an environment that we're not actually in and that's what immersion is yeah i agree i agree with you i think that we kind of fill in the gaps yeah we just do that you've seen studies uh, about this like um like the whole thing i told you when or showed you when it's like a bunch of words spelled horrendously wrong but your brain can read it anyways your brain mm -hmm. just fills it in so especially moments that are immersive or, or high energy or high impact or whatever, it's almost like you're there in the moment. You might as well fill in those gaps or whatever, but it can't. Now I'm saying I, I, I keep illustrating that it doesn't, I don't think, I don't think it's my opinion. I don't think you need to have top shelf graphics uh, to have proper immersion. I think game design and, uh, and storyline and all that, I think that's ways heavier in case in point decked out. All right. While that's being said, I also think that there's something to be said for really good game design. I'm sorry, graphics for really good graphics, yeah. right? I think it gets you there faster. It gets you there faster. Yeah, like yeah. We're, like we we're saying, like maybe you play enough ping pong that eventually you you forget that you're you exist yeah. and you aren't just in the game. But it probably takes a while. Yeah, you know what I mean. Probably takes a long time of staring at that screen to forget that your your real world is to the left and right of you. Yeah, you know. But you put on a VR headset and it's almost instant. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, yes. Have you seen? And I haven't played them in a long time. But you remember playing the old school like Madden games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And when Madden first came out, it's a football game that first came out. I, I don't know. Is that PlayStation or I don't even remember because I I never actually had it. Might have I, been even before PlayStation. 
Okay. What? Yeah, I feel like it's been around a long time. Okay. Well, in any case, I don't know what platform it is because I never really played it that much, but I played it enough where I worked to be like, dude, look at these. Because I worked where there was like a lot of TVs and we would have like uh, a demo mode of it playing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you realize this game is so realistic that if you're not looking directly at the TV and you're looking next to the TV and only your peripheral vision is picking up on it, your brain might actually think that's a real football game. I remember thinking that. If you're not looking at the TV, you look this way, your brain might be like, dude, they're... they're, they're <laughs> if you squint your eyes really hard. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But today, <laughs> you can look directly... I can, There are games, bro, whether it's racing games or it's sports games, there are games that I can look directly at the TV and it might take me several seconds to discern as to whether or not this is a, this is gameplay or this is reality. That's where graphics have brought us. Yeah. And when you start partnering that with VR, because... For the record, VR graphics so far, in my opinion, are not great. It's coming, I'm sure. But when you partner that with VR and with storyline and game design and you give it that level of graphics, uh, this is, we're going to see, you think gaming addiction was once a thing. This is what I'm talking about in regards to the difference between immersive gaming and, a, and immersive reality. I mm -hmm. think people are going to start uh, doing what they think is immersive gaming and it's going to become an immersive reality for them because it's going to be that good. And it might already be, and I just don't even know what's available to us. So anymore. what you're saying is you believe ready player one was actually telling the future. I do to to a certain degree. I do. And, and I think, uh, I mean, I think a lot of, uh, who, who wrote that? That wasn't Orson Scott card. Was it? He didn't write that. No, he, he wrote um, Ender's game. And he and he predicted what the future had in Ender's Game. He predicted it in the seventies, and he crushed it. So, mm -hmm. and I'm just forgive me. I'm just forgetting the author. Yeah, of I Ready space Player the author, one. author too on Ready yeah. Player One. But, um, yeah. So in the in the the book and and now movie, which is uh, good but different than the book a little bit. Very They're both. Different. But the the idea is that these people basically they don't they forget what reality is. Yeah. Because they're just so, they just want to put the headset well, on. And the and reality live. sucks. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. reality sucks. They're living in, in basically slums. Mm -hmm. um, and and they're all addicted to just being in this virtual world because the virtual world is 10 times better than their real life. So yep. why not just spend all your time there? And and it becomes an obsession. And, and basically the, the gist of the story is is that a lesson is learned um, that <laughs> they, they probably should actually take the headsets off at some point in time and, and experience the real world again. Yeah. Right. But it, it does drive home the point that like, we need to be careful that, that uh, we don't get too addicted to not living our real lives, you know? Yeah. See, and I agree with everything you just said, but what I, what I, I think mainly found um, interesting about the movie is that the corruption of the real world um, and the Delta, the poverty Delta found its way into the virtual world. So even yeah. though you were, they were living in, they literally were living in trailers that were stacked on each other. I think they called them the stacks. The stacks, right? yep. yeah. Stacked up trailers. Yeah, exactly. stacked up trailers that went up like several, several, you know, levels or whatever. Uh, so they weren't, these weren't very wealthy people, but they still had the equipment because there was such an abundance of equipment in the world. But, but when they would enter into the Oasis, that's the name of the, the virtual Oasis, world. God, right. it's all coming back. It's been so long since I read the book. But they would enter into the Oasis, which is the virtual world. Even in that world, there was a poverty delta because the quality of your character was indicative to how good your equipment is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you had to crazy. pay for like uh, weapon upgrades and, yes. and character model upgrades and yes. things like that. So you could tell and, even in the game. Yes. And there was a huge contest and a corrupt organization tried to kind of almost rig the contest to win it because there was, it was like it made corruption of the real world made it into this virtual world. It was a different take on what immersive reality and immersive gaming is, but I hate to say this, I think it was probably the most realistic one. I believe uh, that if immersive gaming and immersive reality gets to the point that it was in Ready Player One, I, will, I believe we will see a lot of those things that the game, that the book pointed out. We're going to see uh, the still a, a poverty delta. We're going to see corruption find its way into that reality. Yeah. That's a meek thought, and I didn't really. I I'm don't... sure it's happening now. I mean, like I said, I haven't played GTA in, in a long time, but I can imagine um, in, in this in this world, this open sandbox world, that there's you probably drive around, and I bet there's Coca Cola commercials, you know, billboards probably, and, dude. and stuff. So like, I'm sure there's there's all that's already getting worked into games. Like, maybe I'm wrong because, like I said, I haven't played it, but like that kind of stuff, you know, politics and 
advertisements and and, and yeah. things like that. Why why wouldn't they start to target you know these these games to deliver these messages? Because you know gaming and and uh, it is almost you th you think about the evolution of how we do entertainment, how we get entertainment as human beings, right? Go back in the day, books, then radio, then TV. Now we're talking video game systems. I mean, you're holding a book where, I mean, video game systems were in, only in like the last 50 years. Yeah. Like that's pretty small yes, scale of time frame. Yeah. To, and look how far they've come in the last 50 years. Um, and so just think about what happens when, you know, these, these new headsets that are coming out. The Apple Vision Pro is the, the latest one. You know, to where like all of a sudden this is what you do. You put that on instead of turning the TV on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now everyone in the house just has one of these headsets on and you you can basically have a TV on every wall. <laughs> yeah. But with these things, right? It's yeah. kind of augmented reality, you know, with it. And uh and now that's all of a sudden your form of entertainment. Of course all these things are gonna work their way into that, just like they did radio, just like they did TV. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? You're right. And so yeah, obviously, you know, I feel like that's where it's gonna gonna go. In the same way that Ready Player One predicted. Gosh, that's good. I think you're absolutely right. It's gonna be we're gonna there's gonna be there's there's immersive gaming, there's immersive reality, and that's gonna be a version of invasive reality. <laughs> it's like, is there any is there any safe zone anywhere? Can I just go over here? I don't here? care about the election. Yes, Stop exactly. Me. Let me go over here and just play a game. Oh, but, I have to oh, I gotta pay for the pro subscription and not get ads, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what's going it's probably happening right now. Um, you you touched on a good point there that fifty years is a is a blink of time and it could be argued that we're in our infancy of gaming. What a weird thing to say, considering we have VR. I get it, but but given how it, when we look at this book that we were talking about, it goes back to 1976 or something, right? Seventy two, even seventy two, nineteen seventy two. Yeah. The very here, let's the the very first system ever was called there. the Magnavox Odyssey. Yeah, that's the very first one. That's the one ever. this book mentions, anyway. Right? Well, that's fair. Okay, I'm going off yeah. this book, which seems pretty complete. Uh, 1972. Very good. So Magnavox Odyssey, uh, they sold a total of 330,000 systems. Okay. Let's unpack that. Games never existed. It's new. The idea of the, of games in this realm, it can be argued Magnavox Odyssey was the first of its kind to have some sort of electronic game that interfaces with your, uh, TV, which I'm assuming it does with your tube TV. <laughs> uh, it, it interfaces with it and it provides you some sort of game and it sold 330,000 models, right? This is before mankind knew what we we're even talking about. Uh, and then you, you go forward and I, by the time you get towards the end of this book, like here I am on the N Nintendo DS, 154 million units sold, right? So before you get to the end of this book, you realize, I, what do you think? How many are in here, dude? Like 50 different oh, platforms? So many. Like like yeah. seventy two to now. So many so many companies are trying to get in on it, you know. Especially as it's starting to take off. Yes. You there's, know, there's things in here in 2015. An Nvidia Shield TV. What is that? Your Steam Link. I got one of those in the closet, dude. You do not. No, I'm just kidding. Xbox One. I mean, like like there's so many. There's so many. I do have an Xbox One. Yes. Well, I, I never had an Xbox, but look at this, dude. What they're considering the Apple iPhone a device? Do you play games on it? Yeah. Yeah, you. One you play billion a lot of games I'm, on it, right? I, yeah. yeah. You want to talk about getting immersed? How immersed do you get when you play Candy Crush? I don't play Candy Crush anymore. <laughs> you you <laughs> did anymore? Um, it's been years. Uh, I don't play a lot of phone Clash games of anymore. Clans. I don't. I haven't played that in a long time. Cla long yeah. Time. I for whatever reason I, I I just I don't get into the the mobile games, but my yeah. wife my wife does, and it's not Candy Crush, but it's a very similar type of game. They're just and little she time loved, and she loved, yeah. yeah. She's just always on a little flicking fruit everywhere, or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. But you know, it's a it's a form of you know keeping keeping your brain busy, your hands busy, and yeah. And I think she would prefer to do that than sit there mindlessly staring at a show on TV. Sure, you know, yeah. It's, it's more interactive, and that's that that's the point. You're right? you're in control of something. Yeah, yeah. So let's. I'm gonna go back. So 50 years. 50 years, okay? Well, and not even 50. Yeah, 50. 50 years. Um, where, Where is this going? And how did it grow so fast? How were there so many consoles in this book? It was mm -hmm. like somebody 
Magnavox Odyssey, we tried something. We, mankind, tried something. And mankind really liked the something. So other people had more ideas for different somethings mm-hmm. based on that influence. You fast forward the clock, 50 years, this is chock full of tons of different uh, consoles, most of which I've never even heard of. But it's a testament that we just, we want more. We like this a lot. Yeah, We want more. And we're just getting started. Like VR, I think is neat. I also think it sucks. I think that in terms of what virtual reality actually is, there we're not there yet. We're yeah. going to get there, but we're not there yet. So what is coming? Because if we're just getting started, then what does the future look like? We talked about a room uh, being dedicated to this and really having getting you into an invert in, like a uh, um, immersive reality. Uh, what does the world look like? Maybe I I, I want to stop saying the phrase immersive reality because I don't want us to do that. I want us to stay in immersive gaming because immersive reality, it's only a matter of time before I have to put on something to go to work. You know mm. what I mean? Virtually. You know what you see what I'm saying? I already yeah. have to put on a headset. Well, I already thought about that. Like, instead of having three physical monitors on my desk, do I just put a headset on? And now those monitors are everything I Every, see. Everything you look And I don't at. actually need the physical, you know, you, you don't need a physical keyboard because you can see one on your desk projected right. to at least to your eyes and it can figure out what, what you're touching. You know what I mean? At what point do we start to lose all these physical gadgets that we have because we can make them virtual? Right. It's a know? matter of time. I mean, and the things that got to get better is the technology has to get better. It's not, it's just not. There yeah. Yet. I want to wear some heavy thing on my head. No. Yeah. I, I barely, I mean, I'll wear, I might wear a, a pair of glasses that are way next to nothing. Right. Like that's what I might be willing to do. Right. But the, so the technology has to get much, much better. Um, both from what you're looking at and what your experience is, right? I would, I've seen those before where it's basically, it projects a keyboard onto a desk mm-hmm. and then you can type on the silhouette of the keyboard, right? I, I would struggle to type that way. I need, I need to feel the keys. Yeah, I really, really do. Haptic. I need to, I need to feel yeah. it. So then they might have to up that. Yeah. Right. So to the point, it's going to get to a point to where, where you wear gloves and it's actually like pressing on your fingertips. Yes. As you press right. so that you, you feel like you're feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point it's like, why not just use a keyboard? But but no, I'm with you on that. So, like, that's where I think the world is is, is going. As I think immersive, I think gaming started, I think immersive gaming started from day one. I believe that we wanted to get immersed instantly. It doesn't mean we were able to pull it off. Mm-hmm. But I think that when games first decided, were, were first created, there was no intention by the creators for it to be white noise or an afterthought. It was meant to detach you from reality, if only for a moment. And as technology got better and the creators became more imaginative, now we have games like GTA Five or whatever on. Now we have uh, all these. Uh, now we have VR doing its thing. You ever played? You ever played boxing in VR? Mm-hmm. It's freaky, dude. Like the first dude they put you up against, I'm like, I- I'm afraid of this guy. Like he he <laughs> looks really really vicious, right? Yeah. So I think that that that's, a, that's the type of game you're glad you're not wearing a haptic suit. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to get punched in the gut for that's real. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But I would like to play. You wear a haptic suit for like Battlefield and stuff. Like feel physical, like painful. At least pains. a little bit. Not. A, I don't a feel bit. like I actually got. I don't want to get shot. shot. I don't. But, <laughs> yeah, but a little bit of a tingle. A one-time use haptic shoot when you yeah. when you get shot and stabs you. No, I I want. Uh, no, I want. That, I'm with you though. I want more immersion. But I would I would hope that we do not play in immersive reality. Stay in immersive gaming. This is my, this is gives us desire. Stay in immersive gaming. Look away from immersive reality. I don't, I don't think we should be playing. We're humans though. I know. We always take things too far. I know. (laughs) This is what Ian Malcolm on Jurassic Park said. Your scientists are so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they don't stop to think if they should. That might be where we're at right now. It's like just, yeah, there's, there's a little bit too. There's a, it's, it, it has the capacity to go too far, in my yeah. opinion. But maybe we'll, maybe we'll just let it go too far, and then we'll course correct we'll like pull everything back. else. We'll pull back. I'd like to – so we've been talking about, like, okay, we're not necessarily the dreamers that are going to figure out what's coming up in 50 years from now. But I wonder uh, what our listeners think. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd like to hear – I'd like to read some comments of, like, what some of you think could be the future. What's the next step if we fast forward? Like we said – Look how far we've come in 50 years, you know, yeah. like Skiz was showing the first console from Magnavox 50 years ago and to now, you know, with the Apple Vision Pro and, and, and Microsoft's, uh, what is the the Microsoft one? They have their augmented reality headset as well. The, There's a lot of stuff out there that is like really, really new. What, yeah. what what's, what's coming? What's, what's bought, coming next? What's 50 years from now? 
<laughs> bought four of those. I kept wanting to say the work. Sur- I kept wanting to say the surface, but that's not what it's called. No, no, no. What the is surface it? was supposed to be that really cool table thing. Oh, that, that never good never one. came out. You and I had an idea for. That. I know we were gonna do cool stuff. Yeah. And no, it, it was. It, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's something. It's called something. That's for it's sure. called something. The Microsoft, anyway. Yeah. Um, What's so, it called? Yeah. Uh, throw down some comments. Be dreamers. Yeah, Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Dream away. Fifty what do you years from see? now. What and is it? What is it? What are we dealing with? I want to see. I want to get your opinions on this. Okay. Is Skiz being a doomsday guy? And saying, I don't want immersive reality. I don't want that to be a thing. I think that's a very dangerous step for mankind. I just do. I fully lean into immersive gaming, but not immersive reality. I'd like to see us not move in that direction. So am I being doomsday or do you agree? Or uh, or is there maybe another level of this that I'm not considering? You yeah, know what I mean? Good question. All right. We'll Give be reading comments. Well, me anyway. I, I'll read some <laughs> of them. If you're going to write a comment, make it immersive. So like, look at, I just want to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to end this podcast, but I can't stop looking through this book. It's, it's a cool book. I'm really glad I picked it up. How many, how many PlayStation fours do you think were sold? Ooh, 300 million, 105 million. Oh, I thought it would be more too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, that's because that, they came out with another one and another one and another one. So yeah, they, they can only sell so much in a, in a couple of years. Look at this fella. <laughs> Look at this game. All right, we got to go. Thanks for <laughs> sticking around. You guys are great. See you later. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this game stick. What is that? <laughs>